Assalamualaikum dan selamat, selamat sejahtera. Um, I'm going to talk about aligning final examination questions with course learning outcome based on Bloom's taxonomy. So at the end of the module, uh, you should be able to realize the concept of aligning final examination with the course learning outcome. Design final examin examination questions that are aligned with the course learning outcomes. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip a few slides. Uh, I will go through again with you uh, the slides during the workshop hours. So this is just for you to go through before the workshop. Okay, um, this is this slide explains how you order cognitive skills. Uh, I think you can read this yourself. Um, okay, um, in order for us to determine whether our students uh, conceptual development has reached the higher order cognitive skill, we need to, to make proper planning in terms of uh, the teaching and learning activities and most crucial is the assessment part. So the aims of assessment among others is to judge and decide on students and teachers effectiveness, what, what and how students learn as well as what and how we conduct the teaching and learning activities. So these are the assessment types and examination is one of the common methods to assess students' knowledge acceptance. Um, okay, we have talked about uh, Bloom's taxonomy before in the previous workshop. So in this uh, presentation, I'm just uh, trying to relate between the course learning outcomes and the cognitive levels of the examination questions because they are very much related. Okay, so we, we need to to realize that uh, the course learning outcomes that we design for the course has to be aligned with the levels of the uh, Bloom's taxonomy in the examination question. So these are the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy which we have already gone through in the first uh, workshop. So these are some of the verbs um, uh, suggested for each of the levels. Okay, so I'm going to go through this quickly. Uh, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Okay, so in this uh, uh, in this exercise to actually uh, map between the course learning outcomes and the uh, examination questions, what we are doing is to pair the Bloom's taxonomy. It is not necessarily necessarily important to do this. I mean, it's, it's not a requirement to do this, but but it's good if we if we could just pair. Uh, the Bloom's taxonomy so that we can come up with the lower order cognitive questions. We define as we, uh, the acronym is LOCQ. And then um, example for the lower order cognitive question is whereby we require the student to demonstrate his or her mastery of concept by correctly identifying its use in a piece of computer code not previously seen, for example. So that is uh, the requirement at the level of lower lower order cognitive question. Okay, and then we have the intermediate order of cognitive question, which relates to applying and analyzing. And this is an one example given in the uh, in control engineering, for example. Okay. Uh, next is evaluating and creating, and that is the last two of the Bloom's taxonomy. So this is, uh, represents the higher order cognitive question (HOCQ). So this is also an example given in electronic engineering uh, related to design, uh, test, test, analyzing, and so on. Okay, so you can read that. Aside. Okay, so this is a uh, definition of learning outcomes, course learning outcomes in particular, and I'm sure all of you are well aware of this, which we already discussed also in um, the first one. So with appropriate appropriately defined CLOs, okay, why we need it to be uh, properly defined so that students are motivated to focus on skills and knowledge that a particular course is expected to deliver. And secondly, for students to have clear idea of the expected outcomes and how they will be assessed. So it is very important to, to define the CLO properly. So action verbs is the key element in stating the specific CLOs that define student learning. Of course, this also we covered in the first uh, workshop. Okay, so when we want to choose the action verbs, we must uh, choose those that convey instructional intent, 
uh, verbs that specify student performance that is acceptable as evidence that learning has taken place. Okay, so we need to properly choose the action verbs. So uh, we can refer to Bloom's taxonomy in choosing the action verbs for the CLOs and the verbs lists are available. Okay, we can search for Bloom's taxonomy verbs and we can get a various various uh, lists of uh, the verbs. And of course, in this case, we are if you look if you search in the internet, you will find uh, the first version of the Bloom's taxonomy and and the one that that I am implying now is uh, the one that uh, we uh, use six levels uh, related to remembering, understanding, applying, uh, anal analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Okay. So you will find a various sets of verbs lists if you search uh, in the if you Google for it. Okay, so this is a course example. Let's say electronic devices and system. So we come up with our uh, course learning outcome CLO or course outcome. So this is uh, we can if we categorize it in the three categories just now instead of six. So we can say that. Demonstrate knowledge of modern electronic devices and system as the second or the intermediate or the cognitive level, and then analyze also at intermediate or the cognitive level, which relates to intermediate or the cognitive question that we're going to design later on. Okay, then we have uh, select components and system for engineering application. So this is also uh, Selecting is actually at the level of evaluating. So this is higher order cognitive question. And then we have uh, recognized the future challenge and opportunity in the, this changing area of electronics, of course. And al also this is at the level of evaluating, which is higher order cognitive question, uh, relates to higher order cognitive question. So what we need to take note is that when we are ass assessing the acquired skills of final year student, normally, normally, uh, we should not have too many questions that relate to the lower order cognitive. Okay, uh, for first year st students, it's, it's the other way around. We should not have too many higher order cognitive questions in the examination paper. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, even uh, from first year, whether you're a first year student, for first year student or final year students, uh, the type of questions that you can design can be from the lowest level to the highest level. But of course, less of the lowest level for final year student, students, more of the uh, less of the higher order level for the first year student. But still, you can evaluate at all levels. Okay, so let's say we uh, categorize our questions with the three uh, level of cognitive, which is lower order uh, cognitive question, intermediate order, and higher order. So we have to ensure that there will be a correct balance between uh, these three cognitive questions in the examination papers. I mean, it is expected for us to have that alignment between the uh, between the CLOs, the course learning outcome or course outcomes, and the level of questions that that we impose on the students at the end of the course. Okay. For example, in final exam. So that's one method of actually designing the exam questions based on this, is to use the least hand lions model. There may be other models out there, but I'm just focusing on this one to share with all of you. So for this uh, model, there are four main areas of an examining question based on the verb, the focus, the topic, and the perspective. So you can see in this um, table that if your question is evaluate the use of PID control for non-linear process, then you can actually um, categorize it into four areas, into the four areas as, as I mentioned just now. So that will be uh, evaluate as the verb, which strongly links to the Bloom's level five, uh, Bloom's taxonomy level five, which is under the, the higher order cognitive question, which is considered as a higher order cognitive question. The use of is the focus, okay, but we, we include this, this sentence only if the verb does not provide the full picture of the question. So we have to include 
this uh, sentence. Okay, the use of is the focus. Uh, the topic, yeah, the topic related to the question is actually PID control, and the perspective is actually for nonlinear process. So that is how this model categorizes the question into four areas. Okay, this is just an example. So if you have a simple question like state Ohm's law, state Ohm's law, state by itself uh, represent a verb for Bloom's level one, okay, um, which is remembering. So a uh, lower order cognitive question under the category of lower order cognitive question and the topic is Ohm's law, but this can just be one question in the, in the exam, for example. So the topic is Ohm's law and because it is clear, on what is required for the students to answer so you don't need to have the additional two areas uh, as you as you saw in the previous slide okay and example three if you have state reasons why fit forward control is preferable to feedback control so the word preferable uh, actually change the level to uh, bloom's level four which is actually um, analysis okay so reasons why preferable so it falls under cognitive level uh, intermediate order cognitive cognitive uh, question yeah? it, it fits a intermediate order cognitive question so the focus is reasons why preferable and then the topic will, there are two topics here that that relate to the question which is fit forward control and also feedback control so the students need to answer the questions according to this okay so when we when we uh, make the analysis between the question levels across the examination paper for for many courses in this case as seen in the table and then compare it with the learning outcome levels so you can you can actually uh, evaluate your learning outcomes levels if you look at uh, the uh, CLOs that I gave in the previous slide you can see that there there were four CLOs but in this case we say we are saying that out of the four, we are only evaluating three CLOs or we are only assessing three CLOs in the examination. So then I will uh, categorize uh, in terms of the cognitive level for the learning outcomes. So for example, in this case, we see that uh, the from previous slides, okay, uh, there is no lower order cognitive, cognitive level. Okay. We have 67% uh, is intermediate order and 33% is the uh, higher order. So that means we try, we should try to make our final exam question aligned to this level of the cost, learn, cost outcome level. Okay, cost learning outcome level. So in this case, if you look at the table, we see that by evaluating the question, we see we found that 80% of the final exam question is low order. 20% uh, is intermediate order and 0 for higher order. So that means there is a mismatch between the uh, learning outcome that you have designed and the questions, the uh, final exam questions that you have designed also for the course. So you can see that uh, you are, there's not supposed to be any lower order quantitative question because because that's how you design the CLO to be, okay? But when you, when you look at the exam question, 80% is actually lower order, 20% intermediate order, and none higher order, okay? So I, I think you can see the, the mismatch for this particular course, okay? But of course, you can look at other courses and found that they are aligned. For example, if you look at maps, signals, and simulation, it is ideal. Okay, because it aligns between the two. And even in control systems, it's not exact, but you see that most is intermi intermediate order, 90%, but maybe a few, uh, about 10% is low order, but still within acceptable limit because you know, most of it is, yes, intermediate order. So it aligns to the CLO. Okay, so this is considered as ide ideal. Okay, so there are other categories that we can look at. Uh, which actually relates to um, close. That means it's close, but whether it's acceptable or not, it's up to, to the program coordinator to consider. Okay, I don't want to go through that too long. So this is some uh, 
some comparison made. Yeah, uh, I already mentioned that in uh, just now. So uh, these are some additional uh, um, information related to the uh, exam examination questions. And when you design exam question, you should not take into account the grading factor in producing a good uh, exam question. That means, for example, in designing, you may um, come out with an open-ended question. Uh, oh, sorry, open-ended. Uh, it's an open-ended question. And then that means there are various answers to the various solutions. So that should not be the reason why you don't want to give such question in an examination. Okay, that's what that, that statement means. But, but of course, demonstration of higher order cognitive level in final examina examination may be uh, difficult because of the limited, limited time. Okay, so that means it is possible to have 0% uh, higher order cognitive question in a final exam because you can justify by saying that uh, the higher order parts are assessed through assignments, for, for example, in a case study, in a simulation, uh, project, design, you know. So you can actually have this assessment not in the final exam. Okay, so I think that's all that I want to talk about. So we will see uh, during the workshop uh, later on, uh, whereby if you have questions, you are free uh, to do so that, that are related to the slides that I have presented. Thank you.